In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create a real-time ripple effect on water, or any surface like this, in Blender. We'll use a physics called Dynamic Paint, you can set up this in just one minute. So let us start with a blank new file. We'll first delete this default cube, and instead, we'll add one simple plane. This object must have enough number of subdivisions. So go to the Modifiers tab, and add one, Subdivision Surface Modifier. Switch over to the simple mode, and then increase the levels here, the more subdivisions you can add, the better. Then go to the Physics tab, and enable this Dynamic Paint option. In this type field, we have got two options. One option is the canvas and another is the brush. So we need two objects to create a ripple effect. This plane will work as our canvas object. And later we have to add one more object which will work as the brush, so for this plane object, let us keep this type as canvas. Then click on Add Canvas, and a new section will get created. Here in this surface type, we have to change this to, Waves. For now, we'll go with these default settings. Next, we need the second object here, for our brush. So go to the Add menu, and you can add any object, maybe a cone. Let us reduce the size of this cone, by a factor of, 0.3. And we'll move it up, by say 1 unit. Let us also change this angle, to 180 degrees, so that the cone points downward. So we have both the objects now ready for the action. The last thing is, we have to convert this to a brush object. So go to the Physics tab, and enable Dynamic Paint. This time in the Type field, select the Brush option. Then click on Add Brush, to create this brush section. We are good with these default options. Now start the animation. You can press the G key on your keyboard to grab this cone and move your mouse to move it and hit the canvas surface like this. You'll notice that the ripples are not very smooth. So select the canvas surface, then go to the object menu and select Shade Smooth. Let us again select the cone. Since our animation is currently going on here, you'll notice that these tools will not work. So instead, use the G key to grab this and use your mouse to hit the surface. This time the ripples are very smooth. So, we got the ripple effect created nicely. This physics in Blender really works great, and as you have seen, you can set up this very quickly. You'll just love to play with this. We'll now discuss few other things that are also important. Let us first create a suitable material for our canvas. So turn on the rendered view mode, and we can also enable the HDRI lighting. Now go to the materials tab, and create a new material. Let us change this base color to some shade of blue, similar to water. And we'll also increase this metallic property, all the way up to 1. Once again, we can run the simulation. Let us then grab the cone and create some ripples on the canvas object. Cool. I think it is looking far more beautiful on this water-like material. Now, select the canvas and go to the Physics tab. You'll see several fields in the settings of this physics. This timescale field controls the rate at which the simulation should progress. For example, let us change this to 3, and then run the simulation again. This time you'll see that the ripples are running away super fast, because the simulation is now happening 3 times faster than earlier. Then, this speed field is little different, it controls how fast the ripples should reach the end of this surface. But it also depends on the area of the surface, so for a bigger area, you should lower the speed for better effect. So next, this damping field controls how long the ripples persist, or how soon they disappear, and the surface again becomes normal. For example, let us change this to zero, which means there is no damping at all. So the ripples will continue to exist forever. We'll test this case as well, although most of the times it does not look very realistic. The ripples will now hit the borders and come back with equal force. They do not disappear like before. The only place where I think this can be useful is, if you want to create some static noise on a shallow water, some ripples that continue to play around. But you should slow down the speed in that case. Let's go back to the Physics tab. For most of the cases, I found that these default values are already very perfect, but you can still experiment with these values. Then this Open Borders option is applicable when you have a real 3D object with multiple sides. The ripples will pass through the borders, they won't bounce anymore. Let us take an example. So in this case, we have a 3D object. 
And we have enabled this cube as our canvas object. Let us also enable this open borders option. So the ripples won't stop or bounce at these borders, they will pass through the borders and propagate to the other sides of the cube as well. Let us run the simulation. And we'll create some ripples on the cube with our cone. Maybe some big ones. So you can see that the ripples are not bouncing from the borders, they are now propagating to all other sides of the cube, as expected. Then, we have one more important field called, anti-aliasing. You can enable this for high quality and smooth ripples, as it uses a more detailed sampling of the wave. Please also remember, if you have a bigger canvas area, you should also have more subdivisions for this, either by adding multiple subdivision surface modifiers or using a loop cut in the edit mode. Now we'll see how to automate this effect with animation, so go to the first frame of our scene. Let us select this brush object. We have to then go to the Object Properties tab, and insert a keyframe for the current location values. What we want to do here is, we'll move this brush here and there, to touch the canvas at multiple places, and we want its movements to be keyframed. So enable the Auto Keyframe feature. If you are not already familiar with Auto Keyframing in Blender, you can check our tutorial, where we have discussed on Auto Keyframes, and various options with the same. The link is given in the video description. So, let us now go to frame number 20. We'll then grab the cone and move it down to touch the canvas surface, somewhere like this. And we automatically get these fields keyframed. Now let's say we go to frame 40. And we move the cone somewhere here. Then say we go to frame number 60. And we again bring it down to touch the canvas surface. Please ensure that the fields are getting keyframed for each move. Let us create few more such keyframes to hit the canvas surface several times. And then back to the initial position. We are done with this, so let us turn off this auto keyframe option and go to the first frame. If you now run the simulation, we'll see that the action is playing on its own and the ripples are getting created just as we designed them. You can also hide the cone or the brush to create a rainfall-like effect on water. Once everything is done, Select this canvas object, and go to the Physics tab. Now scroll down all the way below to this section called Cache. If you expand this, you'll get more options. This is to bake the dynamic paint physics, you should bake it before the final render. But please also remember that we have the baking start frame and end frame numbers here. They should match your animation length, so if you have a longer time frame, you must first update these fields accordingly. So let us start the baking process. Here, you can see the progress of this baking. Once it is complete, you can run the simulation to verify it once, and take a render output. Using this same technique, along with a particle system, we can also create a realistic raindrop scene, like this on water. We will discuss about this in our next tutorial. So I hope you got a fairly good idea about how to use dynamic paint, and how to create ripples on any surface. If you have any questions on this, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.